Mr. Deputy Minister, it's an honor to have you by our side tonight. Dear guests, friends, I'm honored. I'm honored this morning to have you here and to present my Wakfe. It's a great pleasure to be here as the founder president of Maya Wakfe amongst all of you. And I welcome you, my panelists, and I commend for all your good work that you all do. I welcome also our contributions that we've been made by our Genghis Bay and all the workers that, you know, the, the organizers. We're here today to collectively learn about share ideas on the subject of the use of technology. I'm personally here to share my experience as the president of Mayavak Foundation. Maya was founded with a dream, and this dream of a productive society, open to exploration, helping others, and filled with healthy individuals to have an, a free childhood and safe individuals who have had a free childhood in their September 2014. Maya works through main four pillars. One is MHPSS program. It's a psychosocial support program for children and refugees and host community. The second is trauma-informed schools. The third is capacity building for psychosocial support program. And the fourth is volunteer program. Maya Vakfe believes that all people deserve a human and live humanly and hope for the future. Therefore contributes to the mental, physical, and academic development of children. And young people that we work with are between the age five and 18. The foundation supports them toward realizing their potential, expressing themselves freely, developing creative thinking skills, and becoming productive. We carry out extensive programs with the contribution of local, international funds while collaborating with private and public institutions. Maya Vakfa places disadvantaged and traumatized children at the core of its activities. And we strive to increase the sensitivity and capacity of the people and institutions and children that interact with. We can speak of all the injustices that suffered by people who have been forcibly displaced all day long. Today, the number of refugees, asylum seekers, and displaced people worldwide are simply staggering. When we dehumanize these populations and don't offer hope, we lose out collectively as humankind. This dehumanization of the other concerns all of us, but is preventable. Whilst their circumstances are extraordinary, many of the concerns of refugees are ones that would be familiar to people everywhere that are still in need of many services, like emergency relief aid, service access to education, mental health, psychosocial services, housing, referrals, their civil rights, funding, employment. We have amongst you a lot of people here that I know of that have contributed immensely to those needs. We need to bring universal compassion back to the forefront of our interactions and respond to those who have suffered injustices. So I want to raise one question. How do you mitigate this dehumanization conditions? One solution is to empower refugees with technology use and leverage solutions. The most recent wave of technology is a wave of technological innovation. So technology is good at connecting people, 
and transferring knowledge to help refugees. So tech solutions have emerged to help refugees at every stage of their journey, from smartphones, helping plan routes, to finding housing, translation languages, job hunting, health services, educational opportunities, supporting social inclusion efforts. Tech helps scale up response, improve collaboration between NGOs, offer solutions where there are gaps. Today, we have the opportunity to combine the best practices in human-centered design with informed technology choices to build new products the map over the social technology of aid in ways to empower individuals and strengthen communities. I'm aware too that the technology does not come without detractors. In humanitarian crisis, the technological innovations do not easily translate into ethical advances. And there has been criticisms when considering issues such as a person's right to privacy. Nevertheless, aid agencies have shown that technology can be combined with ethical practices in order to move towards a more flexible and human-driven relief system. It's already being used to improve refugees' access to finance and to support their individual autonomy. Innovation helps overhead costs and reduce the role of financial intermediaries, which means that more funds can go to more beneficiaries. Applied responsibility technology can give humanitarian ethical ideals to new life. This panel was brought together through a series of happy coincidences. Hiba, wrote a wonderful article on Thomson Reuters um, Foundation. I suggest you all read. It was on the role of technology and um, refugees last summer. Hakan has been introduced to me uh, through someone I met on a plane last summer, and we became close friends. Uh, I saw Denny's boss um, and on another conference, uh, and thank you for being here today, Danny. Uh, Katerina has been uh, supporting uh, Maya Foundation through UNHCR and is a representative for all NGOs, and thank you. Um, and um, Zeynep is uh, designing a fascinating project in Turkey for 3D printing uh, prosthetics. Uh, I thank her also for being here. Uh, Lydia is fo focusing on language app uh, development and was profiled in Hiba's article. That's why it's interesting to follow her. Um, Marcus, um, I connected to Marcus after meeting his colleague at the UNGA in September. So uh, all my friends, did I skip anyone? I don't know. But uh, all my friends here are really here by a coincidence that we, uh, we got connected. Um, so here we are all today um, for all of you. Uh, today after we listen to some technical solutions in response to all the struggles um, of forced displacement, I call on all of you um, to build empathy, to build compassion for um, let's get together. I hope you will be moved by the plight of refugees. We should work together to empower the whole disadvantaged community. We can build a global, distributed, collaborative human rights action private sector, technology, philanthropists, advocates, communities, companies, researchers, working for and within a common framework. This dehumanization affects, concerns all of us, but it is heartwarming to see under these conditions an enabling environment. 
So here today, this will create more opportunities to build a brighter future all. I know many of you in this room, you work in the field to make sure and to make a positive contribution in this major problem of humanity. I hope this event will bring an opportunity for us to collaborate, to partnership collectively and to live more humanely. Once we make an action, we're responsible for this action. And don't forget to, um, to hashtag. Our hashtag is together for the better future. And thank you. Enjoy today.